Hello, everyone. Very good evening and welcome to Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust Healthcare Special Interest Group. And this is our uh, monthly meeting every uh, month uh, on the third Wednesday at uh, 8.30 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time, 3 p.m. GMT or 11 a.m. ET. We have this uh, meetings and all are welcome here. So, the antitrust policy, like uh, the Linux Foundation antitrust policy, like uh, we all are welcome here, but at the same time, whatever you uh, tell it out, it is uh, recorded and it is posted. It is a open source. You should be knowing that and it should be like uh, all the activities that is being monitored. So please read through that and all are welcome. We welcome everyone. There is no uh, differentiation in gender, race, or no differentiation over here. And one more thing, you have to uh, come forward and give your participation. You will not be getting any special invite also. That also is there. Okay, so like, uh, let's go for, uh, I will stop sharing. Give me a sec. Yes. I found it. So in today's meeting agenda, like um, I will share it again. Yeah, uh, I hope my this wiki page is uh, visible to you all. So this meeting is recorded and you will be getting the meeting link uh, with this uh, reference link in the YouTube channel, it will be available. And uh, if the new people, you are requested to introduce yourself first. And I believe like uh, most of the people joined here are uh, from Simplify Softec as the speakers today are from that company. But I will request you to uh, quickly unmute and introduce yourself. Uh, just one one word so that will be a better thing so shall we go ahead with the uh, people like prashant and harini i will give your introduction and i will ask you to introduce yourself at the end but others could you please make it hi shrivali here from simplify i'm senior project manager here in simplify yeah welcome shrivali yeah, thank you So, uh, hi. So I think everyone know me. So from my all team is from my side, my team only. So yeah, uh, I am Prasan. I uh, basically I am working as a uh, innovate engineer in Simplify only. So Great. yeah, that is only from my side. Yes, welcome Prashant. Yeah, Abhijit. So, Kavya and Murthy, like, uh, could you introduce yourself? Welcome, you are a, you are the leader of them, right? <laughs> sure, Anastasia. Hello, everyone. Very good evening. Uh, this is Murthy Chitlur. Uh, I'm heading uh, Delivery and Innovation uh, with Simplify. And, uh, of course, uh, very good supporter of uh, Linux Foundation and their products. Uh, been on working on this platform for the last uh, uh, six to seven years. So here I am to uh, support and share my colleagues, Harini and Prashant today. Yeah. So which one is yours, Elizabeth? The first one or second one? I just I'm a biomedical engineer. Um, I. Oh gosh, I have two of them, either one. Sorry, I have to delete one of them. Okay, no, no. Okay, so can I go ahead with the first one? Yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So today, like, uh, we have uh, um, Harani and Prashant with us. So like, Harani is working as a blockchain innovation engineer in 
Simplify Soft Tech and Prashant is an innovation engineer in the uh, same company and they will be presenting the farmer track and trace and uh, one thing I have to tell they are the winners of Hyperhack uh, 2024 that is con uh, conducted by the LF India chapter like in uh, a month back so in by August 31st we winded it off so like uh, they have done a really good work like we have to appreciate that and uh, Harani presented during that event that uh, these two are the main people in it, uh, I believe. So like uh, before giving the floor to you, I will just uh, give the uh, glimpse of what uh, happened on the co-chairs meeting on uh, 14th October. See like uh, learning to uh, tokens are being uh, done as a uh, mentorship project uh, by Alfonso and group. So they have actually used, we are, ha I'm happy to tell it, they are actually, they have actually used our uh, healthcare special interest groups, all the recordings, and they are ready to provide us uh, blockchain based this tokens for the ones who are attending the meeting as well as like who are learning from the uh, already available presentations attend a quiz and get your own token so like when you get time please go through the learning tokens project from the uh, mentorship projects and uh, not only that like uh, in the climate uh, special interest group they are doing a uh, like uh, especially like complete uh, digital twin for the G uh, GHG emissions that carbon uh, trading for that uh, they are working on a project if anyone is interested in it you can also just uh, look into the climate uh, change special interest group and the earlier presentations that all the links are already listed it over here so these are the presentations we have already gone through and last month also like uh, we had uh, Soya Chandra from uh, KBA that was somewhat similar but uh, that is a, a kind of like uh, uh, not a fully uh, completed project but uh, I believe this pharma this is also pharma chain track and trace will be the best one uh, to listen and experience we are waiting for it and uh, next month the meeting will be on 20th of November so uh, dr sonali uh, should be giving a presentation i will be updating you all later on and uh, like what we are planning to do is see like we have uh, created a linkedin page please do follow it and currently the uh, followers it has increased to 190 so it is a very very uh, recently it is created and this followers is really a good number and i wish you all like I expect you all to follow that. Please do. And well, any any uh, suggestions are there to improve this uh, healthcare special interest group, you are most welcome. And now Harini and Prashant, the floor is to you. I will stop sharing. You can start sharing. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Anshya. I hope I'm audible now. Hello. Uh, Harini, you have to be a little more louder. Uh, hello, Anushya. Am I audible now? Yeah, but still it is mild. Okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. I think some network issue or something. I'm not sure. Okay. Let me try to be as loud as possible. Yes, yes. This is a little better. Yes, please okay. go ahead. Yeah. Okay, then I'll start sharing. And if it is possible, keep your videos on so uh, uh, people will be able to like experience what you are telling. Like. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I hope my screen is visible now. Uh, it's yet to. It was showing little earlier. Yeah, now it is visible. Okay, okay. Yeah, you are using the same uh, <laughs> yeah. record. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. I'm Harini Ravikumar. As you already know me, uh, we are all working under the same team. So, along with me, I have Prashant, who has also worked together for this um, Hyperhack Hackathon. So uh, the product that we have showcased for this um, hackathon is nothing but track and trace uh, for the um, uh, pharma industry. So track and trace is nothing but uh, it's a blockchain-based uh, supply chain management solution 
in order to track and trace the uh, product right from the raw material till the product reaches to the pharmacy site. So uh, before understanding the details of the product, let's understand the challenges that we were initially facing. So initially it was a manual method. So in that manual system, it was very hard for the people to identify the uh, counterfeit drugs, basically the fake drugs that was entering into the supply chain system, due to which there was lack of transparency and traceability. Also, it was inefficient. Basically, the manual method was inefficient and it was prone to errors many times and it consumed more human power, uh, more uh, resource, was consumption, resource consumption was happening and as well as the regulatory complaints challenges. So in order to get rid of all those issues, we have come up with a solution, which is nothing but a blockchain based supply chain. So as you already know, like blockchain, uh, I mean, like the reason why we have chosen the blockchain is nothing but its nature. Like it is immutable. Basically, whatever the data that you're storing in the blockchain will never get deleted or it, it cannot be easily altered. It's a tamper proof. That is why we call blockchain as a tamper proof. And moreover, the blockchain which we are using here is a private blockchain, which is nothing but Hyperledger Fabric Framework. So when you're using private blockchain, here no anonymous member can be a part of the transaction. Only the authorized member who has the certificates can participate in the transaction. And moreover, it will enhance the security when it comes to a private blockchain framework, which is uh, specialized for an enterprise. And it, it ensures the transparency, the traceability, and moreover, it ensures the authenticity of the product that you are uh, entering into the supply chain. And uh, you can ensure, and uh, moreover, it's an aut automated process, like it's an automation system, and because of which the process will be entirely streamlined. And you can enhance the uh, compliances with the regulatory standards as well. Now, talking about the uh, entire architecture of the solution. So, as I already mentioned, it's nothing but a hyperledger fabric framework, which we have deployed on the Kubernetes. Now, let's say if any of the user who is hitting the application from the front end, that request will be tra traversed via API gateway. And uh, here we have the Node.js middleware. The request will be transferred uh, via Node.js middleware, where you can see the MongoDB as acting as an off-chain database. Now, it can be any type of request, if it's a GET request or POST request. Based on that, the request will get reflected on the database. Either it stores or it fetches, and from there, the request is sent as an incoming traffic through the load balancer, where the load balancer will be working in a round robin method, and that service is sent to the blockchain. So here you can see the Node.js that is acting as container. So basically these are nothing but the Node.js APIs that we have deployed as a replica set. So now let's talk about the Hyperledger Fabric Network. So here we have utilized the Fabric version uh, of 2.3, where you can see uh, three organization members who are nothing but the manufacturer, the distributor, and the pharmacy. Every organization will have two peers each, and each peer contains a CouchDB configuration. So here, CouchDB will be acting as an on-chain database. So basically, like uh, on-chain on database is nothing but where you can store the hashed value of the data which you are storing. And along with that, you can see the Fabric CA. So the Fabric CA is nothing but it's a tool that you can be used to generate the certificates for each of these network members to join the network. So there are two ways, like either you can go with Cryptogen and Fabric CA, but the reason why we have chosen Fabric CA is because it ensures the renewal, the, uh, I mean like the renewal of the certificates or revocation, or if any new member is trying to join in between the network setup. So in that case, Fabric CA is a better option when it comes to production grade application than compared with Cryptogen. Now, in order to monitor this whole setup, we have this, uh, I mean like Prometheus and Grafana. So Prometheus is nothing but it's a monitoring tool, which you already know where you can monitor the metrics, the Kubernetes process and all those things. And other than that, we have Grafana, which is nothing but the visualization tool of Prometheus. Next to it, you have the Hyperledger Fabric Explorer, which is nothing but a monitoring tool, especially for the Hyperledger Fabric framework. Here you can easily witness who are the network members, uh, who are the, uh, I mean, like what are the smart contracts that we have deployed, the channel and everything related to the Hyperledger Fabric framework. Now, along with it, since it's a uh, Kubernetes deployment, we have the NFS setup where the transaction data will be stored or if any data lossage, I mean, like losing is happening because if the network goes down or if any of the issues are happening, we can retrieve those data from the NFS. So this is the overall architecture of the solution that we have created. Now let's talk about the roles that is uh, representing the whole application. So here the role starts from manufacturer 
distributor, pharmacy, and end user. As of now, we are just focusing only till the pharmacy side since it's a B2B application. But of course, like we are working on enhancements where you can include the user, end user as well. Now let's talk about the manufacturing part. Manufacturer, what uh, I mean, like, what is the role of manufacturer is nothing but the manufacturer will onboard themselves on the application by doing the registration part. Once a manufacturer onboard themselves uh, by using the username and password, they have to onboard the product which they are manufacturing. They have to upload their product uh, in that application of which they are manufacturing. And once the product has been uploaded, a QR code will be generated for every product they are uploading. So what happens is once a QR code is generated, that will be dynamically getting updated in every step, in distributor level, in pharmacy level, and even in the end user level. So a QR code that is generated on the beginning will be there till the end and it will be updated dynamically at each step. Now, once the product has been uploaded and a QR code has been generated, now the manufacturer wants to transfer the product to the distributor. In that case, they have to send it in a, ba like in a batch format, in a batch upload format. So what happens is, let's say if they wanted to transfer like 10, uh, pro I mean like 10 drugs, 10 uh, batches of drugs. So what they're doing is a batch ID common to all those drugs will be created. And using that batch ID, we are sending the uh, products, uh, the manufacturer will be uh, sending the product to the distributor via logistics. Now in the distributor side, the distributor should also log in in their portal. They have to onboard themselves. They have to log in in their portal. And from that side, the distributor will first verify the product before receiving it, before accepting the product. It ensures whether the product has been properly uh, received from the uh, uh, authentic, I mean, like authorized manufacturer, rather than uh, any like um, uh, like what to say, like any third parties or a anyone who's trying to tamper the application. So in in that case, they'll verify and they will sign the product which they're receiving. It's a transaction, so they'll verify and sign the transaction. Once that is done, they will accept the product. Once the product has been accepted. Now the distributor's task is to send it to the pharmacy, to distribute it to the, each of the pharmacies. In that case, what they'll do is they'll, via the logistics level, uh, the, the distributor will distribute the product to the pharmacy. Now what happens is similar uh, to what the distributor does. The pharmacy will also verify the batches that they have received. And once the verification is successful, it will then uh, push, I mean, accept the product. Once the product has been accepted, now the pharmacy uh, uh, authority will push that product to the selling zone. So which means that we are, the, the pharmacy is ensuring that this particular product is ready for the sale to the end user. So once the, if any of the end user who's coming in between and they wanted to purchase a product, once the product is purchased, that purchase product will be pushed to the, so uh, I mean like sold zone. Uh, we can call it like a separate tab for sold. It will be pushed to the sold. And there are other uh, tabs where you can, uh, have the products which are yet to be purchased or which are uh, sorry or which are uh, ready to be so, uh, selling and all those things so this is how the whole process works i mean like based on the each persona every persona will have a separate login and dashboard page now at each step as i already mentioned at each step the qr code will be generated and the qr code will be dynamically updated so uh, the what are the solution benefits like the benefits out of doing this or uh, doing all this entire setup as you know, like it ensures the traceability, the authenticity, the transparency, and moreover, cost efficiency and compliance management as well. Now, this is the uh, login page which you are seeing right now. This login page is common to all the roles. Here we can mention the username, the password, and we have to select the role, uh, like whether it is mass, a manufacturer, retail, sorry, distributor, or the pharmacy level. So once the, any of the uh, users has been logged in, this is the uh, login page, sorry, this is the dashboard page of the manufacturer where you can see the register product button. If you click on the register product, the manufacturer should upload their product details. And once the upload is successful, you can see the products that are listed here. So these are already uploaded details, already uploaded product. Now, once the upload is successful, a QR code is generated, which you can see here. So once the QR code, if you can able to witness the QR code, Next, the manufacturer's task is to push it uh, to create the batch. I mean, like to create the batch so that it can be sent to the distributor. So once again, okay, you can see see the create batch uh, form also here by giving the batch ID, uh, the SSN ID, and the product expiry date and all the details to create the batch. So once this create batch is successful, it you can see here the batch listing. Basically, there are there, there can be any number of batches that can that has to be sent to any of the distributors. So, for, so those batches will be listing here. 
Next comes the distributor dashboard page. So here you can see the uh, distributors page where the distributor has to send the product which they have received to the pharmacy via logistics. So here before uh, accepting, they have to first select which batch they wanted to send it to the distributor, sorry, to the pharmacy. So once they select it, they enter the batch ID, they enter the SSE number, and if they accept it, the, pro the batch will be sent from the distributor to the pharmacy. So this is the pharmacy dashboard page. So here also like the pharmacy will accept it by selecting the batch, entering the batch ID and SSE number. So uh, this is the overall uh, dashboard screens which you are displaying, uh, sorry, which you can able to see. Now Prashant will walk us through the whole application. So uh, Prashant, please go ahead. I'll stop sharing the screen. Uh, hi team. So uh, one minute. Sorry, uh, just give me a one minute. Huh? Got it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you okay, keep it ready. Harani, I have a doubt. Can I ask it now or uh, yeah, uh, can you I take it at the end? Yeah, sure. You can ask so, like, uh, here the batch number is manually entered. Am I correct? Yes, as of now, it's manually entered, but we can also like make it as a dynamic method as well. Yeah, 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 that uh, scanner uh, can be used. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so that will even uh, uh, remove the human errors on a later date. Correct. As of now, it's just for this product, like we have made it uh, manual, but we can make it dynamic also. It is actually dynamic in the client side. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Uh, so, hi. So, as explained by the Harney, we have a three role, uh, which is manufacturer, a distributor, and pharmacy. So, uh, phase, uh, first phase of the this application will be start from the manufacturer who is producing the uh, goods like medicines and all. Uh, this is all the just like uh, test data. So they have to just register their uh, product, whatever they are producing, they have to register themselves first. What the, like one organization can generate multiple product, right? So they have to enter the like paracetamol. So paracetamol uh, like quantity, how much like which paracetamol. Uh, registered company name uh, their numbers like uh, their mail ID their GST number uh, sorry GST number And their locations. Yeah. So while doing this, they are register. They have to upload upload the image. Mm, yeah. I think I have some image. Let me upload this. And we registered the paracetamol product name numbers and all these. Now the process will start to create create the batch. So batch like for the paracetamol, uh, we have available batch, but uh, we have to enter the batch number. So just create a batch. Right now it's manual as uh, suggest batch. Uh, maybe some random number. Yeah, and SSC number. Uh, they have to enter the expiry date, like what is the expiry date for this uh, medicines and what is the product name. They can enter the, uh, by using GT number, they can enter uh, same. So we can fetch the data and they also have the option to uh, like select from there. And we will create the batch. Yeah. 
so it take time now batch is created so if you so, uh, uh, see we create the batch like this one uh, batch uh, so we have the qr code generated now and we also have the option for the this manufacturer to see the status so we are uh, we, if we are able to see we uh, status is like new batch created uh, with all the details like this qr code and all the info whatever we input like spider it and all we are able to see it so even qr code did have the data right now yeah So this is the QR code uh, detail. Uh, like as a, uh, so we create a one uh, different QR code uh, access page. So where we will see the all the detail with respect to that batch number ID and their expiry date and all, like with the manufacturer and what is the overall details. Like so we get the new batch when created and uh, time for now. Yeah. So now the process is going on this manufacturer uh, have to send this uh, batch uh, product to the uh, distributor for the supply chain yeah so they have to enter the batch number what is the ssc number And distributor. So we have platform uh, right now nine, uh, four distributor as a test user. So we create uh, take the like test nine and the gmail.com and we'll send the it to the distributor. Again, it take time uh, because yeah. So now the status will be update for this batch ID to send to the distributor as explained by the Harney and uh, yeah so even we can see the status here also sent to a distributor now uh, the role of the uh, distributor will come so they have to accept this batch so we are also maintaining the uh, inventory for each persona so like distributor and uh, we are maintaining the persona for the distributor So this is the batch which is available and which they have to accept uh, to add in their inventory. So while uh, uh, like supplier uh, who is uh, like we can say logistic person will go to the distributor. Distributor have the list of all the batch which is scheduled by the manufacturer to them. They have to enter it manually. Okay, they uh, receive it for now. And while entering it. Uh, uh, they have to accept it, yeah. And while accepting, uh, this uh, batch number will be added in the uh, distributor uh, inventory, yeah. And uh, the status for this batch number is updated. Uh, it is showing now. It is in uh, as a distributor inventory. Yeah. Now, uh, again, uh, from distributor, there is a multiple pharmacy who is uh, like and uh, aligned with them. So uh, now this distributor have to send this uh, uh, like batch batch uh, product to the uh, pharmacy. So which pharmacy they want to uh, send it? They have to enter the batch number again. And the, for now, we have platform only one pharmacy. So uh, that is one only role registered right now. So while uh, entering the, this uh, detail, uh, they will in, uh, like select the destination whose pharmacy they are sending. And again, they have to follow the uh, update and while sending uh, this batch number is uh, like removed from their inventory and add in the uh, pharmacy if they accept yeah now inventory is ma maintained for the pharmacy and also the qr code detail will be updated sent to pharmacy in time uh, again 
now pharmacy role will be come in picture so again uh, pharmacy have same role uh, like logistic person will go to them they have to uh, accept it and while accepting they will add in their inventory yeah. so again it is visible uh, yeah this one so this batch number is like uh, detail all the qr code will be visible here all the status will manually they are able to see and uh, now they have to accept to add in their inventory So uh, while accepting uh, the status will be up update. So now it, it is in uh, pharmacy uh, inventory and while uh, yeah and they are able to see all the batch which they accept and uh, their all details and while selling they have to enter the batch number which batch number they are uh, entering. So uh, in the client side we uh, add the QR code button. Uh, scanner so they are just scan it and we fetch the data so this is like a test platform so yeah, we cannot show that one so while selling uh, like how we got to know the, uh, the product is in individual or where so while selling, they have to enter the batch number and uh, how. Uh, so we will get to know he uh, it is sold to the individual. Yeah, and uh, individual are consuming that one. So now it is sold to the uh, customer, and uh, even uh, they are able to see all the data batch which they are selling to the individual and uh, how much they have right now in their inventory. So by using this, we are maintaining inventory and all the process flow. Even this map is uh, there is static right now, but in the client side it is dynamic. So we are able to see all the details like from ma in map wipe. So all the location wipe and geolocation we are able to show them. Yeah. So that is from my side. Yeah. Any query? Question that uh, whether uh, to which customer it is sold that is also maintained or it is just like yeah. it is sold. That so it is like just sold. So customer data like taking the data from each customer like yeah, that sold. won't be possible. That is what I asked. Yeah. Uh, but the customer can see the complete. Uh, uh, so uh, in this, right? yeah. So in back side of the product, they have the QR code. They will scan it and they are able to see all the data like new batch when they are from where the destination to uh, right now with the pharmacy or what when they are able to all the data this is the test website so we are not uh, able to show all the but in the production one we are able to show everything like with the distributor with the pharmacy and everything whatever the data public data we are showing them any other query that's actually a great product and uh, much needed also. So if <laughs> anyone have any query, I think uh, myself and uh, Elizabeth are the ones new to this pro project, I think. So Elizabeth, do you have any query on this? So whatever we saw, it is the replicate of the production. So production is totally uh, different. We can't show the due to the some confidential, but huh, what is the uh, same flow? That's great, great one. Mm, can I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, yes, please. Okay, thank you, Chandra. Okay. Yeah, we have a few more people joining. 
like Jagadish, Kitanjali, could you quickly introduce yourself? Oh uh, yes. So uh, I'm working as project manager from last one year with Simplify okay. with a grocery client. So I'm into basically trade intelligence and banking projects. Okay, great. Uh, Jagadish, do you have LFID? Is it Jagadish Prasad? Uh, uh, no, they don't have. Okay, okay. I have, but I don't know why, how to use that one. <laughs> Uh, no, like you can log into the uh, I already log in. Yeah. Confluence page. Now the links have been changed. Oh, one minute. I think I already log in. Yeah, open profile dot tab link. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So any other uh, questions from anyone? So I am uh, sharing this uh, agenda and the meeting link. So you could uh, see that, like all the links over there. And there is a way how to get your LFIDs also. Please do get it. And if uh, like, if you want to appreciate them, you can always do that. So it was a really a great presentation. Thank you, Harini and Prashant. It was nice to hear you and see the demo. So that's really good. Yeah, thank you. So all the best for uh, your further work also. I hope like you will be getting more and more clients on this. I wish you all the best. Murthy, your okay. team has done a really good work. So congrats to you. Thank you, Anisuya. Of course, definitely I'm proud of our team. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So in, any other questions there? Or you want to share something? You can go ahead. No, not from me. OK. Okay, uh, fine, people are still joining. Today it is a household day. Uh, and those who have joined late, you can uh, see the recording. So like uh, the probably the recording will be up, uh, uploaded in a day or two in the uh, YouTube link that is given uh, in the agenda page itself. So once again, I will say thank you, everyone. Thanks okay. for uh, joining. If there is uh, nothing else to share, we can find off the meeting. So any, anything else there is to share? Thanks, Anisya. Uh, very good organizing. And of course, thanks for providing this opportunity for our team. Oh, that's my pleasure. 
So I have uh, taken the attendance of everyone who have joined also, I suppose. So once again, uh, Simplify Tech team, thank you for joining. And uh, I do follow your works in the LinkedIn. So like keep up with your good work. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, once again, thank you, Anisha. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, team. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night.